Hello everybody, today we will perform an experiment on the cooling tower unit. Cooling towers are widely used in industry to remove excess heat from water to air. For this, the water and air come in contact to lower the temperature of water, which is circulating through various systems. Uh, the applications of uh, cooling towers are numerous. Uh, they are such as in air conditioning, heavy industry, power plants, and so on. Uh, this is the wet uh, cooling tower with open circuit. And we use forced air ventilation in this case. And uh, in this device, uh, air and water come into dir directly contact. And uh, water gives its heat to the air through convection. This is pure heat transfer without any material change. But there is also evaporation happens. Uh, through evaporation, uh, the water loses some evaporation heat, and so uh, this further cools down the water. And this unit uh, pr uh, gives us information about some principles and uh, main components of the forced uh, air ventilation wet cooling towers. Now, let's start with the um, some main components of the unit. Let's start with uh, firstly cooling column. You see this is transparent and it's allowing to observe the process clearly. And there is a red states inside it which are arranged at angles to each other. The aim of this part is to increase the surface area uh, to give a maximum time for, for water and air to contact with each other. And the cooling performance of device depends on its design. And the packing density is one of the most important characteristics of cooling tower because it affects the cooling capacity, cooling efficiency of the device. The packing density is the ratio between all the total surface area of all the states and the volume of the cooling column. Cooling column is this part. And the packing density is the ratio between the total surface area of all the states and volume of the column, volume of the uh, channel, cooling, cooling column. Uh, then next part is the, let's talk about the pump. This is the pump. Uh, the water to be cooled uh, is pumped through the circuit uh, by a centrifugal pump. And uh, what, uh, the flow rate of water can be regulated by regulator valve. We can increase or decrease the volumetric flow rate of water by adjusting this knob. Uh, then uh, there is a uh, fan. This is fan. Fan generates air flow inside the cooling column. And the volumetric flow rate of air can be adjusted by, butter, by, butterfly, by butterfly valve. Uh, then uh, here is the heater inside the water tank. We heat the water before the experiment and we can see the uh, heater heating. We can adjust the heating power with this knob. We can give different uh, powers to the heater. Then this is the main switch, of course, for turning on the system. Here is the monitors on the left side of the device. We can monitor uh, experiment results uh, through this displays. And of course, we said that uh, the uh, the, uh, there is an 
convection and mass transfer because there is evaporation. So uh, the some water molecules evaporates into air and air can take up uh, water molecules inside it. So it can carry it along uh, water with itself and it can result the water loss. And there is a moisture eliminator. Moisture eliminator uh, used to uh, prevent, prevent the water loss along the airflow. It is a kind of uh, filter wool. It can uh, catch up the water droplets, then this water droplets fall back and it minimizes the water loss. And then we said that uh, the water is pumped through the centrifugal pump and it comes to the uh, cooling, uh, cooling tower. And uh, here inside the, this part, here is a spray nozzle. Spray nozzle is used to distribute the water onto the packaging inside the cooling column. Uh, it ensures that the spray of water is applied to the entire cross section of the cooling tower. Therefore, we use, we use sprayed nozzle. Then, of course, uh, we said we take uh, measurements of temperature, humidity, water flow measurements. So there is a temperature, humidity, flow sensors. Now let's talk about the uh, arrangement of sensors. Uh, there are two uh, combined uh, pressure humidity sensors at inlet and outlet of the Airflow, they measures the temperature and humidity and relative humidity at inlet and outlet of the air stream. There is also T4. It is the temperature sensor. It measures the temperature of inlet water. T5 uh, that is measures the uh, temperature of the water outlet from the system. T3 is for supply tank, uh, measures the temperature of supply tank. F is measures the flow rate of the water. And there is a pressure sensor in order to find the pressure drop across the cooling, chamb uh, cooling column. Now let's start an experiment. Uh, firstly, we should fill the tanks because if we turn on the pump or heater without uh, filling uh, these tanks, uh, it can damage the device. So for, first of all, we have to fill the uh, water tanks. Uh, the, bottom, the bottom tank with approximately 6 liter water and the supply tank approximately 3 liter water. Uh, then let's uh, check the, if all the temperature and humidity sensors are connected to the system. And we see all of them are connected. And the uh, device is also uh, supported by the computer software. We can use device without computer software, just uh, monitoring the experiment results in this displays. Uh, but uh, using uh, computer software is uh, advantageous because uh, because uh, computer software provide us with additional information uh, such as graphs, HX graphs, charts, and uh, calculations based on the experiment results. And it's not time consuming and it's easier to observe the experiment. And now we check the if a uh, computer is connected to the system and it's connected. Now let's turn on the uh, system with main switch. 
uh, and uh, now we can turn on the heater and uh, set it set the heating level to one kilowatt. Uh, then let's uh, switch on the fan in order to generate airflow inside the cooling chamber. Uh, so we can turn on pump immediately after uh, fun because uh, we should wait a little bit because we need uh, the water inside the tank uh, to be warmer because without that uh, we cannot achieve heat load and we cannot observe uh, exact experiment results. So let's uh, wait a little bit uh, to warm the water inside the tank. We heated up the water. Now we have a warm water, so we can now turn on the pump for starting an experiment. Now the pump is ready for experiment, and we adjust the flow rate uh, by this regulating wall and let's uh, monitor the flow rate of water with this monitor. I uh, give the flow rate to the water 30 liter per hour and you see the experiment starts. The spray nozzle sprays the water onto the packaging inside the cooling column and the uh, water uh, flows through the whole surface of the packaging from top to the bottom, and air is flowing uh, from bottom to the top, and the water and air come in direct, direct contact with each other, and water gives its heat to the air, by convection, as well as there is an evaporation and uh, some water molecules evaporate into the air and it also loses some evaporation heat and further uh, cooling happens because of the evaporation. So we can say that in, the, in this process uh, there is a uh, mass transfer besides that the heat transfer because of the evaporation. Now let's monitor the experiment results. We see the water inlet temperature. Water in, we measure the water inlet temperature with temperature sensor at the top of the column. It is 32.7 degrees Celsius. And water outlet temperature is 23.3 degrees Celsius. And uh, here is also the uh, results of the air inlet uh, temperature and humidity. They are 59.5% relative humidity in air inlet and 24.2 is the temperature of air inlet and uh, the relative humidity at air out outlet is 90.4% and temperature is 22.5 degrees Celsius. And uh, the pressure sensors measures the differential pressure across the cooling column. This is uh, approximately nine Pascal in this case. So we can also monitor the experiment results using computer software. We can see HX graphs and we can also see the calculations based on the experiment results. Uh, the aim of the experiment is to investigate and understand the influence of the volumetric water flow rate, volumetric air flow rate, packing density, 
the cooling water temperature on the performance of cooling. So we can easily evaluate the influence of these parameters on the cooling performance uh, by just uh, changing the volumetric flow rate by uh, appropriate adjusting balls. So let's firstly look how the changing water flow rate affects to the process. Therefore, we regulate the water flow uh, by regulator wall. So let's uh, uh, evaluate how the increasing water flow rate affects the process. We increase the water flow rate with this regulator wall. And now let's uh, monitor the calculating results on the computer software. You see here uh, the cooling range, uh, wet bulb approach, cooling coefficient uh, for the process. Uh, it can uh, give us information about the performance of cooling. Now uh, let's again, uh, in this case the wet bulb approach is 6.3 Kelvin and the cooling coefficient is 0.56. And the cooling range is approximately 8.3 Kelvin. Now, again, let's increase the water flow. And the software uh, automatically calculates the experiment uh, results. And you see, uh, before it is 6.3, the cooling range, but in this case, it's 7.7 uh, .7 Kelvin. Wet bulb approach is 7.2 uh, Kelvin, and cooling coefficient is 0 0.5. Now let's again uh, increase the volumetric flow rate. We see that the increasing volumetric flow rate decreases the cooling range, increases the wet bulb approach, and decreases the cooling coefficient, which means that the increasing of the water flow rate decreases the cooling performance of the cooling tower. Now uh, let's evaluate the influence of uh, volumetric air flow to the process. Let's, uh, uh, for now it's approximately 60 cubic meters per hour. Let's increase it. Uh, the volumetric uh, flow of air is approximately 104 cubic meter per hour. For this case, the cooling range, the calculated cooling range is 6.6 .6 Kelvin. The wet bulb approach is 6.7 Kelvin, and the cooling coefficient is 0 0.5. Now let's increase the volumetric air flow. Uh, we set the volumetric air flow to 100 and 52 cubic meter per hour, and let's uh, monitor how the experiment uh, calculations will change. We see that the uh, cooling range is increasing gradually, wet bulb approach is decreasing, and the cooling coefficient is uh, 0 0.5 before, but now it's 0 0.56. Now let's increase the volumetric flow of air again. Again we observe that the cooling range is increases with increasing volumetric air flow. Wet bulb approach is decreasing and the cooling coefficient is increasing 
before it's 0 0.5, but now it's 0 0.58. We set the heating level of heater to 2 kilowatt, and we're monitoring that. With uh, increasing the cooling water temperature, the cooling range is gradually increases, the wet bulb approach is decreases, and the cooling coefficient is increases. So the increasing the temperature of cooling water enhanced the performance of cooling in the cooling tower. Uh, there are some terminology you might be interested in, so let's try to explain some of them. Uh, first, uh, one of them is cooling range. Cooling range is the difference of temperature between, air, uh, between water inlet and water outlet. Uh, the more that this difference, uh, the more the performance of cooling. Next one is cooling limit. Uh, cooling limit is the lowest achievable cooling temperature of water. It's the same as the wet bulb temperature of ambient air. The wet bulb temperature of uh, air is the possible lowest temperature that it can be cooled by evaporation of water inside air. So cooling limit and wet bulb temperature of air are the same. They show the lowest uh, temperature that can be achieved by evaporation. So we said that uh, there is a mass transfer. Some water molecules uh, is taken up by water, and it results uh, the further further cools down of the air of the water. So uh, the air have uh, some ability to take up of to take up water molecules. The and it calls its cooling effect. Uh, when the relative humidity of air reaches to the 100 percent, this kind of uh, air is called saturated air. The saturated air cannot uh, take, uh, take up the water molecules anymore, and after this, the cooling by evaporation cannot occur. So uh, the next one is the wet bulb approach. Wet bulb approach is the difference between the water outlet temperature and the cooling limit or wet bulb temperature. You can ask how we can find the wet bulb temperature in the process. We can find wet bulb temperature using Molier diagram. Uh, the computer software provides us with HX graphs. In this uh, diagram, the temperatures are shown in the vertical axis, and the load or absolute humidity is shown on the horizontal axis. And you see here two points, one and two. They correspond to the air inlet and air outlet, and uh, it uh, carries some water inside it. So we can find wet bulb temperature using this graph. Uh, you see here is the one. This curve uh, corresponds to the relative humidity curves, and the last one is corresponds to the saturation relative humidity. The relative humidity in this case is 100%. And we said that uh, after 100% uh, relative humidity, uh, the cooling by evaporation cannot happen. And this temperature is called wet bulb temperature or cooling limit. Uh, we can easily find wet bulb temperature using this uh, graph. For this, uh, we just need to draw uh, diagonals from each point, for example, from one, and uh, finding the intersection of this diagonal with uh, the saturation line. And after finding the intersection, we can easily 
find the corresponding temperature and this temperature is called is called the wet bulb temperature or cooling limit and the wet bulb and each uh, cooling tower each cooling tower has its wet bulb approach it uh, displays uh, the cooling towers functioning. Uh, it's good to have a lower wet bulb approach for good cooling performance. Next one is the cooling coefficient. Cooling coefficient is influenced by the air water flow rate and it can be calculated by this equation. The numerator of this uh, ratio is the cooling range and the denominator is the difference between uh, temperature of water inlet and uh, wet bulb temperature. The next term is the water loss. We said that uh, the uh, air can take up the water molecules because of the evaporation and it can carry it along these water molecules with itself. To prevent this, we use moisture eliminators in cooling towers, but uh, despite of that, uh, there is some water loss all in all cooling towers. We can calculate the water loss using this equation. Uh, it is the difference of uh, absolute humidities in the, at, at the air inlet and outlet uh, multiplied by the air flow rate. Next one is the heat load. Heat load is the product of the water flow rate times the specific heat of water times the cooling range of the process. In this experiment we demonstrated the influence of what, uh, air flow rate, water flow rate and cooling uh, water temperature to the cooling performance. And the findings reveals that uh, the volumetric air flow rate and the temperature of cooling water enhance the cooling performance, but the increasing water flow rate uh, decreases the cooling performance. That's it for today's lesson, and see you next lesson.